Hi folks, let's show how we can make this crescent wrench and it actually works. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. We had a request for a video to make this crescent wrench and there's two sides here. There's making the wrench itself and then they're showing the joints that gets you to the, the mechanism here, which is awesome. So I did what I usually do nowadays, which is I hopped on GrabCAD, searched for wrench, and I found one. So I'm not going to create a wrench from scratch, partly because it's not something I think I'm particularly good at, and there's really no reason to. Let's upload a new version and start from scratch. I'm gonna click Upload, and I'm gonna to go to these files. And when we downloaded it, there's five SolidWorks files here. Really cool thing about Fusion 360, it includes a free built-in what's called a translator. So it can take SOLIDWORKS files, Creo files, Inventor files, many different types of CAD softwares. What it also does is it recognizes that the assembly is the parent for these files. So we're going to see here, I'm going to click all of them, drag it to upload, and choose upload. And it's going to create one file, and that's going to have all of our uh, wrench parts in one file, which is pretty sweet. Open it up. Here's what it looks like. Switch from sculpt to model. Change our units to inches. And I'm going to also right click and say capture design history because we want to be working in a parametric manner here. Good news is uh, those four SOLIDWORKS files each came in as an individual component and that's really important because a component is a real object or a discrete object in the real world. And so we've got, you know, we've got the handle part here. In fact, let's rename it. We'll call this the wrench. We'll call this the movable jaw. This will be the worm gear. This will be the sh pin or shaft, whatever you want to call it save our file so that's the good news the bad news is right now I can do things like that I can drag anything uh, any of these components all around they have no relation to each other so let's fix that I'm gonna click on the wrench itself and that's gonna be my reference object so I'm gonna right click and say ground what that means is this one doesn't move everything else moves around it the way I like to do this is by using the light bulbs to turn things on and off so I can see uh, much more easily. So I'll turn off the movable and I'll turn off the worm gear. So I've just got this pin and the wrench. See how this is modeled in place? I suspect that means we can do an assemble as built joint. It uh, saves you a little bit of time over the regular joint. So what are the two components? It's this and it's this and rigid is actually fine because that pin would, wouldn't really rotate. Done. So now I want to go between the pin and the worm gear. and I want the worm gear to rotate over that. When I was practicing for this video I think I had a problem with an as-built. Let's try it again though. As-built joint, the components would be this and this not rigid, it would be revolute. And we pick our center rotation. Oh, that looks okay, actually. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that was the same problem I have. I don't know why this does it. It's kind of weird. It finds some sort of a center of rotation all the way over here. So you can see it's doing this. No big deal. I'll expand my joints here and make sure we get rid of it. Good. So let's start over with that joint. And so we'll say assemble. Just a regular joint this time. Component one is our worm gear. Component two is that, and I'm holding the control key that lets me select. In fact, let me do that over again for the worm gear. I'll hide the pin, just makes it easier. And I'm gonna hover my mouse over this right here and see there's a, a what's called the origin or coin right in the center of that shaft. If I try to move my mouse to get it, ooh, it does work. Well, holding on control locks your selection in which can be a powerful way to let you come over here and now click on it. Component two is the pin. Uh, let's see here. What's my error here? Symbol joint. Uh, 
Okay, so flip that around. Ah, so we may have to play with this offset here. Um, animate it. That looks good. Click OK. So I think we've got an offset problem, and that what that means is, yeah, so we want the worm gear moved up a little over that shaft. Oh, okay, that's actually how I did it. I apologize, I forgot. Assemble joint. If I hold my mouse right here and hold down the control key, see how I can come in here and I can click that center coin? It's the selecting the location on the component that I want that to revolve around. So if I revolve the center of the worm gear around the center of the pin, so I can do the same thing where I can hold, just actually this time I can just come in here and click it like that. Turn my worm gear back on now, hit revolve, that worm gear is centered and I suspect, when I turn on the wrench and the movable, that looks a lot better. In fact, it does still need to rotate a little bit up. So I'll right click, on the Rev2, edit joints, and I'll say offset and Z 0.01, negative 0.01. There we go, 0.04 looks pretty good. Click OK. So now I've got my worm gear rotating in place. Awesome. We need to create a joint for this guy. So turn off the worm gear and the pin. Just a habit of mine. I like to keep it simple. Assemble as built joint. This will be what's called a slider, and it's easy to pick the it's easier to pick the joint first, in my opinion. So pick the slider and then I'll go select the components. So it'll be this and this, and it's probably gonna ask me the reference. So Let's hide the movable jaw, and let's see, if I hover over this, see how I've got the triangle to, hold down control, the triangle to pick from, and I made it again. Perfect. Odd to me that the wrench is moving, because right now the wrench is grounded, and this is all that moves, which is perfect though. Turn on my worm gear in a pin. So good news is we've got our assembly working. Revert that back. Bad news is there's no link between the two. Luckily, that's actually really easy to do. Assemble, motion link, joints. So you pick the two joints. So what's being interconnected here? The revolute joint that revolves the worm gear and the slider. Look at that, click OK. As I rotate this, it moves. Now let's see if we can get it doing it correctly because right now it's kind of decent for understanding there's a link between the two but it doesn't look right. So I'm gonna try show you how I figured this out. Take the worm gear, I'm gonna activate it. I'm gonna do L for line, actually, we'll cl and click on this plane. And before I start sketching a line, I'm going to do P for project. And I want to project, see that curve I just projected on here? It's the purple curve. And if you are having a hard time to see it, expand the worm gear, expand your bodies, and you can turn the body on and off to let you see. Because it is, it's a little confusing if you look at it from an isometric view, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little weird because this is flat view of the 3D nature of that coil. But here's what I want to show you guys. When we go back and edit this sketch, I'm in the sketch right now. Right click, edit. Ooh, double mouse wheel brings you back to an or oriented view. Hit L for line, and now what I can do is do a line from here to here, and see how I was at 90 degrees? D for dimension, that was 0.197, so I know that this has one full revolution in 0.197 inches, 
So let's turn off the sketches here, which I like to do it this way. And we'll go back and I'll edit, right click and edit this motion link. And I'll type 0.197, click OK. Activate our parent assembly here. Looks like something is wrong. I think it's just reversed. If we think about it, if you move it this way, it should be moving in. So go to the right click on this motion link, edit feature, reverse, click OK. Boom. Look at that. Isn't that awesome?